Good morning. Good morning. I am excited to be here. Thank you for being here and worshiping together today. It's a beautiful thing to be a part of the body of Christ and to share these times of worship together as we see the word and spirit and God's graces this morning. A few announcements, uh, a couple things that I wanted to make mention of. When you're looking at the bulletin today, you'll notice that uh, we don't have Chris or Nancy uh, or uh, Pat. Yes, I was, I, I was going to say art, and, and that's true, but that has nothing to do with the music. Uh, and so this morning, there won't, well, there won't be any wor worships or uh, call and echo responses, uh, any music responses any sung responses um, this morning in the worship service, and then the Jensen's will be leading praise songs um, this morning. Also, if you, if, you need worship, uh, if you need prayer or you need to contact me for something, um, if you're new uh, and you've been visiting or you need more information about the things that are upcoming events or what we're doing here, note that on the back of the bulletin, you will see my contact information as well as Jordan's information. And so uh, that's where the contact information is to reach us if you need to do that. The announcements for this morning uh, are the semi-annual meeting is following the service next Sunday, July 21st. There are financial reports. Uh, are they in the back? Did, is that where they're at, Moose? They're in the back. Take a look at those so you're familiar with everything, and if you've got questions beforehand, you're able to have those ready and, and that kind of thing. So uh, we're trying to get that information to you ahead of time so that we can speed the process along of you being prepared for the meeting. Um, pray for the youth uh, that are going on the fly, to fly beyond at the ark this next week. They leave here following service. Uh, next Sunday, there is Younger Youth for all of those who participate in the Younger Youth. Um, also, coming up here on the 26th and the 27th, we have a Youth Service Day on the 26th. Uh, a Flabic team is coming out. They're going to be doing some service projects with us. There will be a game and pizza night on Friday, and then there's a camp out Saturday, the 27th, for the youth group. Lastly, uh, the one call... Uh, we did our first one call announcement this last week. Uh, if you, for some reason, didn't get a call, you need to come find me and let me know. If it didn't work and you, you know, if there was a problem, I want to know. So it'll take a couple weeks probably to iron out any kind of kinks. Um, so one of the things that I wanted to make an announcement about, if you don't recognize the number, that's fine. Sometimes it'll tell you one call when it, when it shows up. A lot of times it might be easier for you not to answer it. Let it go to voicemail, and then you have the voicemail that you can listen to several times. That's sometimes the easiest thing to do. That's how I prefer to do it, so that if I need to, if there's something on there that I miss, I can go back and listen to it again. Um, and if you want to opt out, there are options to do that at the end of the message, so recognize that. It's easy. You just push a button, and, and you can be taken off the list automatically. For those of you who would prefer not to get a voicemail and you would prefer a text, uh, I'll have a sign-up sheet in the back next week for if you would prefer it to be that way. So if you're in business meetings all week or during the day and all of a sudden you get a phone ring in the middle of a meeting and you're frustrated with that and you would prefer to have a text simply just sent to you, I'll have a list in the back, you can do that and I'll change you from a voice message to a text message uh, list that way. Um, the, we believe, at this point, we believe we'll be using it for the prayer chain. However, there will be times in the prayer chain that in emergency cases and some other cases where there will be phone calls made via person, from person to person. And so um, if you've got questions about how the prayer chain is, if you would like to be added to the prayer chain as somebody who prays in our church for people, uh, please contact Ann Olds or myself or Jordan. We can get you that information. And if you have concerns about how the process is working, you have comments that you would like to say, find one of us as well to do that. So that being said, I believe that's all of the announcements. For, I thought you were going to say I missed something. Uh, is, are there any other announcements that need to be saved that I didn't make? 
All right, we're going to begin our service then this morning in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And as we begin this morning, um, we're going to start with our tithes and offerings. But during that time, because we really don't have any music this morning, um, as the, we'll have the ushers come forward to, to pass the plates. But during this time, what I want to do is I want to take this time, because we have no call and response so songs or singing this service, I want to use this time to take prayer requests. And when I pray for the, the offering, I'm going to pray for these prayer requests. We don't do this very often in our congregation, though I think maybe we should start doing it a little more often. So are there prayer requests this morning among the congregation that would like to be prayed over? Go ahead and you guys can come forward while I'm talking. Anybody? Yes. Did you say aunt? Okay. Friend, okay. Okay, and I know I've asked your first name, Paul. Paul, I'm terrible at names, so I'll probably have to ask it again, but all right, so Paul would like us to pray for his friend Dan, and let's just do his last initial, H. All right, Dan H. Yes, Barb. Yes, your son. So Barb's son had open heart surgery, and then in, after following that surgery, that was back in November, following that surgery, uh, he was very sick, and he kept going to the doctors, and they kept saying it was this or that, and they didn't know what was going on. And Barb decided to go out and visit, and that was uh, towards the end of the school year, springtime. It was before Weston's, um, before his graduation party, so it was before school was out. And she went there, and he was laid up in bed, and she took him right to the ER immediately and found out that he had an infection. She, you know, he only probably had maybe four or five more days of that before he would have probably passed with that kind of an infection with open heart surgery. So let's be praying for him. Barb, just because I don't remember first names very well, what was his first name again? Randy? All right. Barb's son, Randy, and recovering from that infection. Yes, Dan. That's right. We've left, we've left them behind, and I don't know what we expect, but uh, if you leave God behind, you're, you're going to get the worst. So we'll pray for the election, pray for, for uh, those that are elected that, you know, that they would believe in God. Does that sound right? Yeah. Thanks, Dan. Any others? Struggling marriages. Struggling marriages? All right. I'd like to pray for Faith's family as they're continually struggling with that. What do you got, Sonny? I'd like to thank God for a miracle last week. He said it was, it was an absolute miracle that he turned his head. Yeah, I think, think that, the, that uh, um, former President Trump didn't, didn't get assassinated. Yeah. And again, I mean, that's kind of jointly with what you're saying, Dan. We, got, we really need God. We really do need God back in our, in our nation. Faith. All right. Please rise. It's awkward. You don't know how fast to to walk without the music. Thank you. Lord Jesus, we come before your altar and we are thankful for the many gifts and blessings that you've bestowed upon us. We thank you for this building. We thank you for the place to come, for the freedom that so many have died for, that we have the right and we have the privilege of worshiping you openly in this nation. Lord Jesus, and as we bring these tithes and offerings to you and we lay them at your altar, we also bring these prayer requests 
and we, 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 we leave it all here, Lord Jesus, for you. We ask that you would be with Paul's friend, Dan H., and that uh, whatever he is struggling with, Lord God, that you would bring light into his world, that you would show yourself to be real and faithful, that your gospel would be present, Lord Jesus, that you would grant faith and belief unto Paul, and we pray, Lord God, that you know the things in his life, you know his needs, and you know how you can use others to love him, so bring people into his life to love him. We pray for Randy for his recovering, Lord Jesus, and we thank you that Barbara's able to get out there and to, to intervene, Lord Jesus, and to bring about uh, the opportunity to go to the ER and, to, and be there now. So we pray, Lord Jesus, that, that that infection would go away, that it would be healed, and that he would have a great recovery as he recovers from the open heart surgery. We, have, uh, we pray, Lord Jesus, for Mike as he comes and gets ready for surgery on his shoulder. Oh, it's not Mike. Who is it? Help me, someone. Who's, who's shoulder surgery? Glenn. We pray, for, we pray for Glenn, Lord Jesus, that, and, and as he goes forward to have surgery on his shoulder. Lord Jesus, we also pray for the upcoming election. And in that, Lord Jesus, we, just, we pray that you would lead and guide people, Lord Jesus, that those who become to office, as you, as you assign people, Lord Jesus, as leaders, that they would be loving you, that they would bring our nation uh, back to a belief in Christ, we so desperately need you, Lord. And so we, we say your will be done. Your will be done, Lord Jesus. You do what you want done in this country. But if it is your will, we would ask, Lord Jesus, that you would call this nation's heart back to you, that each and every one uh, would feel your presence and the need, the relief that is found in your grace and in your gospel. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the failed assassination of the former president. We thank you that, but we pray for those, Lord Jesus, who, who died yesterday in that, for those who were injured. It's just another sign, Lord Jesus, of the presence of evil and the need we have so desperately for you. Pray, Lord Jesus, for struggling marriages. We know that there is victory in you in many things, Lord. Your will be done in those things. In all of these things, Lord Jesus, we find that if we don't look to you, we have no hope. Bring hope, Lord Jesus, by your truth, by your gospel, by your word and by your spirit to all of those who are struggling and even to this morning face family as they continue to mourn. Many are mourning, Lord, the loss of loved ones. And there's no hope without you. So be their hope. Thank you for being ours. In your precious name, Jesus, amen. Please be seated. So we're glad this morning to bring, and, and Jacob, you can leave my mic on as I'm singing, but if you could turn it down so I'm not overbearing, that would be great. Maybe so that whenever I sing the wrong stuff, you don't hear me. <clears throat> but this morning, we're, we're, we don't have, what? Yeah, they do. Yeah, I made sure it was done. I was just freaking out. I'm so sorry. My wife was worried that we didn't do the slides, but we did. So, uh, this morning, we're glad to bring two songs to you. Now, we know them in our home and in our family, but they're probably uh, possibly new to you. I sent out on the one call the name of those so that you could be ready to worship this morning with them. But if they're new, that's fine. If you know them, sing along. If it's new to you, once you get it, you know, you can join in. But the point of this morning's worship is that our hearts is what's important, Right? What we say and what we sing is important. Uh, and these two new songs, the first ones, uh, uh, are probably new, but what they say is so good. So I pray that you would, this morning, find yourself in a place of worship and praise as we sing together. Let's begin with prayer. Jesus, we come before you. Oh, 
by your word and spirit, Lord Jesus, you have declared us to be your children. We get to stand in your presence, holy and blameless in your love, even now in this moment, as we've gathered together in your congregation. You've defined us. Spirit, come. Fill this place. This is your place. We give this time to you. Hear our song and our singing unto you, Lord Jesus. Be glorified. Be set on high. Lord of lords, King of kings, even in this very moment, in each and every heart. In your holy and precious name, amen.
We will continue worshiping this morning by confessing our sins. We'll use the confession that's found in the bulletin and on the screen. Almighty God, our maker and redeemer, we poor sinners confess to you that we are by nature sinful and unclean and that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. Wherefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy 
and ask you for Christ's sake, grant us forgiveness of all our sins. And by your Holy Spirit, increase in us true knowledge of you and of your will and true obedience to your word to the end that by your grace we may come to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Take these moments now in silent confession. Receive now the declaration of grace and the absolution this morning. If this be your sincere confession, and if with penitent hearts you earnestly desire the forgiveness of your sins for the sake of Jesus Christ, God, according to his promise, forgives you all your sins. And by the authority of God's word and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I can declare to you that God, through his grace, has forgiven all your sins. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. We'll call on the lector at this time. Please bow with me a word of prayer. <clears throat> Gracious Heavenly Father, we just call upon you now, Lord, as our nation is in turmoil. We are divided as much as we've ever been. Lord, I just pray, God, that our nation would, would return to you, that there would be a great awakening, Lord, in our land, a return to the Word of God, a return to dependence on God only and not of ourselves. Lord, we are a, a, a selfish na nation. Lord, help us, Lord, to put the, the needs of others before our self-interest, Lord, that our churches would boldly preach the word of God, not the watered-down gospel that we hear many times, Lord, in the churches in America. We pray, O oh God, that you would give uh, pastors Holy Spirit uh, in filling, Lord, that, that they might preach uh, the whole word of God as it is written, We pray for our pastor, Lord, that you would just uh, continue, Lord, to infill him, Lord, with your spirit as he proclaims the word of God here. And we pray, Lord, for the hearts of our nation, Lord, that they would be open to the gospel when it is presented, however it is presented, through whatever means, and that there would be a turning to you, that this nation would truly be a nation under God, a, name, a nation, Lord, that uh, proclaims Jesus and God as the, the one true God, Lord. As there are many gods in this world today, but Lord, you are the one true God, the only God. And so, Lord, we just pray for healing in our nation as we are, we are divided. We are a divided nation, Lord, and, and uh, we are struggling right now, Lord. And Lord, if it, if it means uh, our nation must suffer, Lord, uh, so be it, Lord. But whatever it takes, Lord, for our, for our country to return to you, Lord, we, we call upon you at this time. Lord, also we just pray for the, the youth in our country, Lord, as uh, they are struggling right now, Lord, and there's a lot of uh, depression and a lot of uh, substance abuse, Lord, which is uh, destroying our nation, our youth. And so, Lord, we just pray that, that they would be reached for Christ. 
and that maybe that's uh, what it will be, Lord, for our, our country to, to be uh, revived, is for our youth to come first, Lord, and, and make that bold step. We just pray, Lord, that, uh, that there would just be a, a, a great turning to you, Lord, in our country, and that uh, we pray for our leaders, we pray for our servicemen and women, Lord, for their protection. Uh, and again, Lord, we just, uh, we just glorify the name of Jesus and, and uphold you now, Lord, this time uh, as we uh, call upon you, Lord, in, in this difficult time in our nation. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you would rise, if you are able, and turn with me to uh, the scripture, uh, Amos chapter 7. Beginning with verse 7, reading in Jesus' name. <clears throat> this is what he showed me. Behold, the Lord was standing beside a wall, built with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a, a plumb line. Then the Lord said, Behold, I am setting a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will never again pass by them. The high places of Isaac shall be, be made desolate, and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste. And I'll rise against the house of Jeroboam with the sword. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent to Jeroboam, king of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you in the midst of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words. For thus Amos has said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel must go into exile away from the, his land. And Amaziah said to Amos, O seer, go flee away to the land of Judah, and eat bread there, and prophesy there, but never again prophesy in Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary, and it is a temple of the, of the kingdom. Then Amos answered and said to Amaziah, I was no prophet nor prophet's son, but I was a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore figs. But the Lord took me from, the fall, from following the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go prophesy to my people Israel. It sends our first reading turned also to Ephesians chapter 1. Verses 3 through 14. Get in reading in Jesus' name. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love he predestined us for adoption as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, with which he has blessed us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will, according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in him, things in heaven, things on earth. In him we have obtained an inheritance having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works in all things according to the counsel of his will, so that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be to the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promise of the Holy Spirit, who is a guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire a possession of it to the praise of his glory." Ascends our reading. Let us confess our holy Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, the only Son of our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered with Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. 
He ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From then she will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. We'll call on the children at this time for the children's message. I had the bag this week. What? Well, that's pretty easy, but that's okay. So, have anybody eaten cat food before? You want to try? Why not? What do you think? Why is it called cat food? You mean it's not pasture snacks? <laughs> By the way, it doesn't taste very good. <laughs> but it has everything a cat needs to survive. And everything to kill a pasture. <laughs> so, what, in what way do we get fed? What's your favorite food? Um, spaghetti and meatballs. Who likes spaghetti and meatballs? Mmm. Ella Rose, what's your favorite meal? Do you like tacos? Yeah. What's her favorite food? Steak. steak? <laughs> what? Give me five. I like steak too. High five. High five. High five. High five. Good job. All right. So, the thing is though, as Christians, if we are not fed the Word of God, we won't grow. And, and we need to get to a place in our life as Christians in our faith that we don't just talk about the simple things only. Now, those things are important. What are the primary things in Christianity that we need to believe? What do you... Yeah, that we need to believe that Jesus lived, died, and rose again, right? Right? Now, but you know that there's so much in Scripture that talks about this beyond that. There's stuff that we need to get to that if we only eat, what do you sometimes give a kitten before you give them hard food? We give them soft food, but what else? Milk. Sometimes we give them milk, right? And then we have to change the litter box a lot. But we give them milk. If we can't just live on the only... and the milk of the word of God, though that's important. We need the steak. We need the beef. Where's the beef? Only they're, they're, only they're going to understand that. But we need that meat of the word of God. We need to get deep into the things of the word. But all of it, if we don't do any of it, we don't get fed. What happens when you don't eat? You die. You die. Spiritually, we will die without the Word of God. Without the Word of God and the Spirit in our life, we are in trouble. So we, like we said last week, read the Bible every day, right? That's important. So, good one, Levi. I feel like you just ran to the house last minute and grabbed whatever you could find. All right, arms out. Okay, arms together. Lord Jesus, thank you. That our growth isn't dependent on us, it's, it's on what we're eating. We grow because of you. Feed us richly from your word and by your spirit apply those things to our life. Lead and guide us and use us to love you and to love others. May we never know a day, Lord Jesus, apart from you. In your holy and precious name, Jesus, amen. Now we're going to leave for Zeke, okay? So we're going to say Zeke next week. I'll make sure to text. Jordan, so if for some reason Zeke's not there, then I'll call somebody, but Zeke next week, so you guys can go have a seat. Thank you. They're not going to be there? Okay, so we got to pick somebody else. So, Ainsley? Who said it? Jordan. I didn't even know you were here, Jordan. Hi, Jordan. I forgot you were here. Jordan, so Ainsley next week, okay? 
<laughs> right? Yeah. I, I guess I could have asked you if you were going to be here if I would have remembered you were sitting there. You did that on purpose to hide from me. Mm, I got a really bad taste in my mouth. I was trying to get their attention. I wonder if I got it. All right. Our text today comes from Mark chapter 6, and it's the beheading of John. So let's begin with that. Mark chapter 6, verse 14 and following here. Now King Herod heard of him, for his name had become well known. That's Jesus, by the way. And he said, John the Baptist is risen from the dead, and therefore the, these powers are at work in him. Others said, it is Elijah. And others said it is the prophet, for, or like one of the prophets. But when Herod heard, he, he said, This is John, whom I beheaded. He has been raised from the dead. For Herod himself had sent and laid hand on John, lay a hold of John, and bound him in prison for the sake of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, for he had married her. Because John had said to Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. Therefore, Herodias held it against him and wanted to kill him, but she could not. For Herod feared John, knowing that he was a just and holy man, and he protected him. And when he had heard him, he did many things, and he heard him gladly. Then an, opportunity, an opportune day, day came when Herod, on his birthday, gave a feast for his nobles, the high officers and the chief men of Galilee. And when Herodias' daughter herself came in and danced and pleased Herod and those who sat with him, the king said to the girl, Ask me whatever you want, and I will give it to you. And also swore to her, Whatever you ask me, I will give it to you, up to half my kingdom. So she went out and said to her mother, What shall I ask? And she said, The head of John the Baptist. Immediately she came in and without haste to the king and asked, saying, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. And the king was exceedingly sorry. Yet because of the oaths and because of those who sat with him, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately the king sent an executioner and commanded his head to be brought. And when he went and beheaded him in prison, brought his head on a platter and gave it to the girl, and the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard of it, they came and took away his corpse and laid it in a tomb. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we, we really need you. We see that we need you. It's evident, Lord Jesus, when we look into our world that to make sense of things, but, but just in the same way, Lord God, when we look at this passage of Scripture, we need you to make sense of this. Sometimes, Lord Jesus, so many things in our life don't seem to make sense. Lord God, grant us simple faith. Faith to believe. Your word and spirit. Lord Jesus, you speak now. Bring us richly into your presence. And feed us from your word now. May I decrease and you increase, Jesus. Amen. So this passage of Scripture is, is a passage of Scripture that's descriptive. It's not prescriptive. It's easy to preach from a passage of Scripture that's prescriptive because you just take what's there and tell the other people what's there and do this, right? Believe this. In this case, we're talking about a descriptive section of Scripture that talks about the beheading of John the Baptist. And so from that description of the events that actually took place, the real live events that took place, we must extract from it the gospel, the truth about the law and the truth about the gospel, and have the Lord Jesus and the Word and the Spirit apply that to our own heart. So as we look at it this morning, there are several things that we're going to see as we walk our way through it. As we begin, the, it starts out as it sets the, the stage for what's happening 
is that John the Baptist has already been killed. He's already been beheaded. And Jesus is going about now doing his work. He's doing his ministry. He's doing miracles. And people still don't know who Jesus is. But the word is happening. It's spreading that these things are happening, that the, the miracles that are taking place. And, and so then, as that happens, it's not just, oh, this is Jesus of Nazareth that's doing these miracles. They're trying to decide, who is this man? And one of the, the things that went around that who Jesus was is, well, that it was John the Baptist. Herod thinks he's come back from the dead. That's who's doing these miracles. But then in it, it gives the account of why Jesus or why John the Baptist was beheaded. And it starts as it tells us what happened in verse 17. For Herod himself has, <coughs> cat food. <coughs> For Herod himself had sent and laid hold of John and bound him in prison for the sake of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, for he had married her. Because John had said to Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. That's what happened. This starts all because John is bold to say what was not lawful. You, it is not lawful for you to take your brother's wife. It doesn't say that it was his dead brother's wife. It just says that it was his brother Philip's wife. And obviously, not only did Herod want her as his wife, obviously because of verse 19, Herodias, the wife, wanted Herod. Because when John speaks out and says, this is not lawful, Herodias held it against him and wanted to kill him. But she could not. Because he was protected by Herod. Because Herod, even though Herod's not a great man, feared John because John was a good man, a godly man, a just man. And when John the Baptist would preach, Herod would listen. And he enjoyed listening to John the Baptist. That's what is said as it follows. So John was bold enough to speak up and say what shouldn't be done. What shouldn't be done. We in America have, I think, grown kind of soft because when was the last time you were beheaded for saying something that was unlawful or shouldn't be done? Now, again, it's to the king, right? So, so as, as he's speaking to Herod, who he has the boldness to say what is true in spite of of what they're doing to the king, regardless of circumstance or outcome or what could happen to him, he said, you should not do this. Now, in, in America right now, you can say what shouldn't be, and a lot of times we argue about it. You could be labeled a bigot, for saying what shouldn't be. But we're not yet to the place where we're beheaded for what we say shouldn't be. But you know, what happens when things progress and that we are persecuted? We are jailed we are beheaded for the thing we say that shouldn't be. And this seems kind of crazy to me. When I'm reading this, I get frustrated. I, I almost get frustrated at God, really. Because who was it that made all of this happen? So Herod, he's having a party. 
Herodias' daughter, I would assume this is his niece. It's Herodias' daughter. It doesn't say from whom the father is. It doesn't say it's his daughter. It says it's Herodias' daughter. So it's not Herod's daughter, but it is Herodias' daughter, his brother's wife that's now his wife. And she comes in. It doesn't say what age she is, but she dances for them. And doesn't it seem kind of stupid? Like, it doesn't make sense that she comes in, he dances, and he says, ask me whatever you want, I'm going to give it to you. And then he says, up to half my kingdom. Really? For dancing? I'm in the wrong line of business. He offers something that seems like he shouldn't have offered in the first place. Was he drunk? I mean, who says that? Take, it'd be like the president. I'll give you half of the United States. Are you sure? That doesn't make, you know, when you say that, it, it seems like an empty promise. He didn't expect her to say, I want half the kingdom. Because Herod didn't share power with anybody, right? We know that. As soon as he thought that, they, that the, the new king of the Jews was coming... He wanted to kill children for it, right? So it's not like he would have been like, okay, here's half my kingdom. Maybe it's because she was young, right? So maybe Alana. Alana, I could give you anything you want, anything. What would it be? Up to half my kingdom. What do you want, Alana? A horse? You want a pony? See, you know, like maybe it was Alana's age. Oh, so cute, so beautiful. We didn't, he probably did not expect. I want John's head. And now he has no choice but to honor his word. He had to give John's head. And when I see that, I go, John was beheaded because of that? Where was God in that? the one who paves the way for the coming Messiah, the one who lived in the wilderness, who, who wore camel's hair and ate honey and locusts, who probably only stirred things because he preached the gospel of Jesus Christ, the coming Christ. And for that reason, but then you go, well, doesn't God protect his own? Why didn't God protect him, in a sense, from just some little girl? To me, when I see that, it's hard to make sense of it. I don't know what to do with it. Well, I know this. Just because it happened and that John was beheaded, did that mean that God was any less good? That he was any less protecting John? That he didn't have a will and a plan already? Absolutely not, but that's what we do, don't we? Even now, in the midst of our own community, in the midst of tragedy in our lives, it's hard to make sense of death of young kids that have their whole life ahead of them. Now, I would give anything to go back in time and to stand in the middle of that road to stop that accident from happening. Either one. But that's not how it went, is it? But does that mean God is any less good or righteous? No, it doesn't. So John is beheaded. He loses his life because he said what was not to be done. But there's a time coming in our own nation that if it hasn't begun to start already, it will, I believe. I'm not speaking prophetically. I'm speaking what the Word of God says will happen. It gets worse before it ever is going to get better. Before Jesus comes on the clouds again, it gets worse. 
So what do we expect to see in the world? Do we expect it to, to get better? We pray for it as we should. Jesus, your kingdom come. Your will be done. But the hope is not supposed to be found in a changing America. Our hope is not to be found in that America will be and get better. It is in the truth of what Christ has done. Because there will come a time when not only could we be headed for saying what shouldn't be done, but we could be headed for saying what should be done. What should be done. You should believe in Jesus Christ. It's easy right now to see persecution happening for us saying that shouldn't be because that's where we're at. We don't be headed for it, but we're called out for it. But one day, it will come about that when we say, you need to believe in Jesus, this is what you should do, that we could be beheaded for saying that very thing. What will we do? What will we do? It's easy right now. In America, we're soft. It's easy to claim Jesus right now because it doesn't cost you your life. But what happens when it does? Will you believe when it does, when it's on the line, when it matters? Will you say and know that it could happen, that you would be beheaded? Will you still say, believe, and I believe also? We all want to say yes. Maybe we wouldn't. But this is certain. Our salvation is not in our claiming of Jesus. Our salvation is the finished work on the cross, what Jesus has done. Past tense. Can you turn back the hands of time? Guess what? You can't take Jesus off the cross. He did it himself. He rose again salvation is in nothing else not in a hope of a better economy not in a hope of a better america though we pray for it we want it we want people to believe in jesus in this nation but our hope isn't in that will be accomplished our hope is in what was accomplished already on the cross So really, maybe I made a straw man so I could blast it away. Because it doesn't matter what you would do then. It matters what you do now. Do you believe now, right now, when it's just as ugly and will get uglier, do you believe now? Will we claim now are we bold enough to say, I, I'm a believer. And you know what? When you look at the believers, the Christians of today, how many of you are like, yep, I want to be one of them? Not very often, right? Because from the outside, we're judgmental. We're quick to judge. We're quick to put on a good face. It's one of the things that I can't stand about a Christianity today is everything has to look like it's perfect. Guess what? Life's not perfect. It'll never be perfect. You know who's perfect? Jesus. That's why we believe in him. That's why. Because it's not perfect. And I would rather you see the imperfection and know the perfect Christ rather than act like I've been changed perfectly because I haven't. But Christ loves me and you in spite of our imperfections. And the power of the cross sees not imperfections, but the perfect work of Christ. So it doesn't matter what you will do then. It matters what you're doing now. Will you believe? I beg of you, believe. Call Jesus your own. Make him your savior. Say he is mine. 
and say it boldly, say it loudly. Because the power is in the cross, not in this world. Let us pray. Jesus, who are we to even have expectations? But as new as the sun is this morning and rising, as hot it is in this place, we know you are greater still. And may it be, Lord Jesus, that what moves us, what stirs us, is the fear of the Lord. For we know that the judgment against John as he was beheaded for saying what shouldn't be done is nothing in comparison to the judgment that will come in the final days for those who do not believe. Help us in our unbelief, Lord. Grant us faith, for we cannot muster it up in ourselves alone. We need you so desperately, even now, just to call you our own. We need you to speak it through our mouths. Drag our dead hearts to the cross, Lord. Make the difference, Jesus. Make the way, for we have no way to make it ourselves. Thank you for your love. Thank you for the cross. By the power of your blood, Jesus, and in your name, amen. Would you please rise as we pray together the Lord's Prayer. And as we do that, really think about what we're saying where that has been accomplished, and even now as we stand here in God's kingdom, in his congregation, he's come now, even now, but still yet, Lord, come quickly. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and give you his grace. Go in peace and serve the Lord.